So what exactly is ISA Server? Well, ISA Server, which stands for Internet Security and Acceleration Server, is Microsoft's software-based firewall, proxy, and web caching server. Now, what does all that mean? Well, first of all, a firewall basically defends your internal network from an external network. And if you take a look at this diagram I have up on the screen, I'm in the ISA server management utility, and it's showing me one of the options in the way that I configure an ISA server. Here's my internal network right here. So this will be all my desktop PCs and my servers and all that stuff. Here's the external internet. So this is the internet out there. And then this is where the ISA server is actually running. Notice it looks kind of like a brick wall. Well, that's because it's protecting your internal network from the outside world. Now, when we talk about a firewall, mainly a firewall is blocking brand new requests from the outside world, so like a hacker who might be sitting out here, who wants to come in trying to get to the resources on the inside of our network. The firewall is going to block them on that outside wall, unless we've given the firewall specific rules to allow that data to pass. Now the benefit of using an ISA server is that we have, using a GUI interface, very simple rules. Under, in the ISA server manager, we have this section called the firewall policy, and we build rules saying, like, well, allow outside connections or allow inside connections or whatever we need it to have. So our rule might be to publish an Exchange server. A lot of people use ISA servers to protect their Microsoft Exchange servers because hackers out on the outside world will try to trick your, what, your uh, Exchange server into providing them information. And the ISA's job is to screen some of that communication before it even gets to the Exchange server. So people who are trying to do malformed requests, you know, kind of misformatted requests to an Exchange server, this will hopefully pick that up. Something that a hardware-based firewall, like a Cisco PIX or a SonicWall or one of those type products, doesn't necessarily have the rules that are really specific to a product like Microsoft Exchange. They've got rules telling them direction of traffic and flow and port usage and IP addresses. And they do get a little bit into like SMTP correctly formatted messages and web requests, you know, the type of protocols that can be passed back and forth uh, for web requests. But they really wouldn't get as application specific as an ISA server can be. In fact, if we look at this list of firewalls, Publishing is when we make one of our internal servers available to the outside world. And so it allows the users to come up and connect to, by way of the ISA server, a resource inside our network. They've got one here for Exchange Web Access. They've got one here for mail servers, so SMTP. They've got one here for SharePoint sites. So if you're running SharePoint inside your network and you want to allow uh, connections into it from the outside world, They've got websites and non-web servers, so other types of web servers to access. So that's one of the pieces, and that's what we would typically call the firewall component of the ISA server. Where it's being used, let's go back to our network diagram here, it's being used to handle outside connections coming in and controlling what actually gets to pass to the inside of my network. Now, the next part that ISA server does is what's called the proxy server. Now, a proxy server will actually let your internal clients make a request to the ISA server, and then the ISA server will actually go out and fetch them from the internet. This is used for a couple reasons. One, let's say I have a web server out there on the internet that I don't necessarily trust, you know, my users are visiting them all the time. Well, do I really want my internal computers directly talking to that server? No. What I'd like to have them do is make the request to the ISA server. The ISA server can then check its list of rules, because back on this firewall policy, I could actually build rules allowing users to specific websites. Those are the access rules option we see down here, where I could create an access rule that says, well, allow clients to access websites. And they can do particular protocols. And I can even provide a list of what external addresses they're allowed to go to. If I don't want to allow my users to access every single website out there. So what we've got is we've got the ability to control the internal users and where they go. And that's what a lot of organizations like to set up their uh, ISA server to do. Now, one of the other pieces that can happen there 
is the ISIS server can keep a cache of websites that your internal users have gone out to visit. And if it does that, if, the same u if another user goes to the same website, it doesn't necessarily have to go out and get a brand new copy of that data from the website if it hasn't changed. What it can do is when a second client asks for the same web page, the ISIS server can look inside its cache and determine does it have a copy of that website. Well, you got to say, well, isn't that going to take a lot of space? Well, it could, but think about the size of hard drives. You know, a lot of people build ISA servers out of high-end desktop PCs, or they will use, you know, one U, uh, so one unit rack mount servers, because what mainly what an ISA server needs is it needs processing power, network communication, and RAM. The hard disk is really just to run your operating system, but since most hard drives these days are 36 gig or 72 gig or 144 gig. It only takes about 5 to 10 gigs to run the operating system. The rest can be utilized as a web cache quite effectively. And so those are sort of the key concepts that we use an ISA server for. Now, you will notice in this diagram they show another uh, type of item. They show VPN clients. Because yes, the ISA server can act as a VPN server where utilizing dial-up networking, client PCs can establish a dial-up connection, but not a dial-up to a modem. They dial basically up to the IP address of your ISA server, which will then make it look like, through the use of encryption uh, technologies, it will make it look like that user is sitting on your internal network. So they can gain direct access to the file and print servers, so they can map drive letters and all that good stuff. The only downside to that is you've got outside connections making uh, a connection to your ISA server for the purpose of encryption and all that. And most organizations and most configurations that I would implement for my customers, I've still got a hardware type firewall in place and most of those will have VPN functionality. These days I can put one of my customers into something like a Cisco ASA 5505 with a 10 user license or a 50 user license for, all, for just oh, around five or six hundred dollars. But for the, me to put in an ISA server, well I'm going to pay about fifteen hundred dollars for the ISA license. I'm going to pay for the server, so probably another thousand, two thousand, three thousand dollars for the ISA server, and then another thousand dollars for the Windows license. So to put in an ISA server to act as a VPN server, I can find that I can get a dedicated device that's built for it from the ground up to handle my VPN connections. So I'm not a big fan of the using the ISA server as a VPN endpoint, but it can be done as well. Basically though, the VPN gives you a way so that users who are outside your network, we can make them look like they're inside the network. And what I would typically do is right about here where I click here, that's where I would put a hardware firewall and bring everything together. Well, hopefully that gives you a little bit of idea about what an ISA server can do. I know I went a little technical there on a few things, but that's the idea of the videos here at learnitfirst.com. And we want you to be able to basically understand the technology and then view the videos to actually watch what's happening. So enjoy the rest of the videos up here at the site.